Thank you, uh, gentlemen, for your participation on this panel today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member, for calling this panel. Um, uh, you know, some have uh, hypothesized that uh, uh, that Asia uh, was able to respond more quickly than than the Western nations, in part because they had the experience of SARS. They uh, they learned from that experience. The old uh, you know COVID nineteen uh, fool us once, shame on you, but fool us twice, shame on us. And um, and so I do want to look back at some of the things that we uh, we did not do terribly well and try and understand why. And I, I know Rear Admiral Bolowitz, uh, you you uh, you indicated you didn't want to talk about things that happened before, I think, March 19th. But given where you are, you probably have some perspective on that. We we did not have a very substantial stockpile then, as you pointed out. We now have uh, what sounds like an ample and growing stockpile. It's going to be well rotated. It sounds uh, it sounds ideal. But why, why were we uh, so, uh, if you will, short uh, prepared with regards to our stockpile? Was it the bureaucracy? Was it um, uh, administrations? Uh, I'm not looking for any particular names. I'm looking for uh, w where the problem was. Was it Congress? Did we not uh, uh, provide sufficient funds to actually purchase a stockpile? Where, where was the problem and how do we avoid that in the future? Sir, uh, uh, Again, I have um, I you now have a pretty good working knowledge of the national stockpile. Um, uh, I will tell you that uh, uh, the Health and Human Services team uh, brought that up from uh, uh, the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta to the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness um, uh, about a year plus ago. And so I'm I, again I'm uh, I was moved from the Joint Staff as the vice director for logistics in, uh, in mid-March uh, and had not worked with uh, the, the health and human services staff. Uh, the national stockpile has more in it than just um, uh, uh, pandemic-related uh, supplies. It also has um, chem bio uh, uh, focus. Uh, so it Admiral, has Admiral, Admiral, I have su such a short period of time. Uh, if, if you don't have, you know, had a good uh, uh, understanding of, of where the problem was with regards to our medical supplies. That's fine, but but uh, is that something you want to address, or should I move on? Uh, no, sir. I uh, again, uh, uh, I, I'm not a health and service human services employee. I was uh, pulled to, to, to uh, go forward and stabilize the supply chain, and so I I, uh, I have not spent a significant amount of time worrying about. Um, why they did or did not do things in the past. So I would ask that maybe um, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's fine. I think that it, I think be, that, that's fine. I think it'd be helpful uh, if there is some effort to understand that so we can avoid that in the future and be better prepared if needed. Uh, Admiral Jawar, um, uh, you spoke just momentarily ago about uh, the fact that you're coordinating the swabs and I think the medium, uh, which makes sense to me when something's in short supply, there needs to be coordination of how that gets uh, distributed throughout our country. Uh, but I think there's a perception that um, uh, that at the very beginnings of, uh, of this crisis, that, that the federal government said to the states, okay, governors, you got to get your own stuff. Um, and I'm not sure which things were included in that, but I did talk to more than one governor uh, who said that they were uh, scrambling on their own to try and find protective equipment or uh, try and find testing equipment, and 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 they were competing with each other, and in many cases asking for more than they actually needed because they knew they had to uh, do that in order to get what they might need. Um, as we look forward, uh, can you help us uh, put together a a model for what should be uh, originated at the federal level and what should be originated at the state level? And and I don't know whether I, I'm sure it wasn't perfect in the past, but with the experience that we've had now. I think it'd be very, very helpful if, if you, in, in your role, could say, hey, look, these things need to be done federally. These things have to be done at the state level. Is that, is that appropriate? I, yes, sir. Um, and, and thank you for the question. And I, I think y you're exactly on target. Um, I'll just make a comment that during the early parts of this, from mid-March to, to mid-April, um, we had absolute shortages. I mean, there was, there was no question we had shortages of, of everything. And we were in a posture of getting requests through the FEMA system that's part of the organization that they brought 
in trying to adjudicate those requests as much as possible because we could not get prospective like we are now in terms of testing. So it was really down to how many new cases there were, what the hospitals were, and allocating those um, limited supplies. Uh, moving forward uh, from mid-April through now, we've been able to be more prospective to provide states what they've asked for up front. But you are exactly right that an overall strategy and framework of how we work together, particularly in diagnostics um, moving forward, is exactly what we need. I think we have a working framework it was built while we were flying the airplane, uh, but I think now is a good time to look back and make sure that's precisely right and what we need. Thank you, Admiral. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, open this to all three of you, and my guess is no one's going to want to respond to it, <laughs> but I'll ask it nonetheless, which is, do any of you see any gaps, uh, any things we're missing? Uh, we're asking questions based on our perceptions, but you're right there. Are there some things we, we should be focused on to prepare for the next pandemic that we're really not thinking about? Or for that matter, are there things we should be thinking about with regards to the distribution of vaccines to our country we're not thinking about? Are we, is everything ready for the next time this happens or uh, could you direct us to places where, where we should be making a better effort? I'll just make a quick comment and we're obviously working on this because when we see a gap, we try to fill it. Um, I think there's a lot of work on what we're doing right now, and there's a lot of futuristic work through the RADx program. Um, and these are really fantastic things, but I think we have to work on magnifying, networking, uh, uh, improving process flow of what we have right now, because we can get a lot more juice out of the squeeze we're doing right now. Um, and I, I really want to focus on that. Things like, can we really pull samples so that we can use one test to ten, test 10 people? Um, I think we need to be working with a lot more private partners, uh, universities, HBCUs, other groups, in order to make sure that we're reaching the populations we need uh, to reach and we're addressing all the concerns that they have. So um, it's not that this isn't being done, but I think um, we've got a lot of do it now and the futuristic things, but there's a lot in the middle that we really need to focus on because that's where really the advantages are going to be reaped for September and October. Thank you, Admiral. I see my time is up. Mr. Chairman, thank you.